I love trailers, okay? I love trailers for movies, for games, for everything. Trailers are so much fun. Now, most people do love trailers, even if they don't know that they do. Sometimes an absolute piece of shit movie will have a really, really good trailer. I think that's a beautiful thing. Now lately, trailers have become way different than they used to be while using a lot of the same techniques. Our culture revolves around building up hype for things that we can lose ourselves in, like games and movies. Companies now know that excitement for a property will definitely net way more sales. A good trailer will sell a lot of tickets which means that nowadays trailers are way more important than they ever used to be. Now we have trailers for trailers, which is actually pretty ridiculous. But what makes a trailer effective? What makes our heart pound when we see these little bite-sized versions of a show or movie before we even see the final product? I think it's important to look at what a trailer should do and what they shouldn't do. Now before I move on, I'm going to bring attention to three trailers that I think are amazing. Now these trailers do everything that I think a trailer should do in order to be effective. The first is the original trailer for the first Alien film. Now the second one is the first trailer for Inception. Dreams feel real while we're in them. It's only when we wake up that we realize something is actually strange. This is your responsibility. You are not prepared for this. And the third is the official trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. Now I know you guys have probably seen these trailers before, but if you haven't, go back and watch them and look at how effective they are at building the excitement for the property they're advertising. The interesting thing is that they use drastically different approaches, but also very similar techniques. Now I'm gonna look at these techniques as core values that a good trailer should employ. Number one, show as little information as possible. A good trailer should show us as little about the plot as humanly possible. At the same time, you don't wanna show nothing because then the audience will just be confused. Now we've all been in the theater after you've watched a really confusing and like weird trailer. You can hear everybody in the theater being like, what the fuck was that? Alternatively, if you end up showing too much of the plot, People are gonna get pissed off. Here are some trailers that don't do this very good. How to Train Your Dragon 2. I liked the first movie a lot, and I didn't go see the second one because the trailer spoils like a million things. Oh, so that's his mom? His mom is alive? I thought she was dead. Why are you spoiling this for me? Another trailer I really don't like is for Spider-Man Homecoming. As of the time of making this video, this movie is not out yet, and I'm very annoyed that I know exactly how the movie goes. Based on me watching one trailer, one time, I now know that Peter swings around as Spider-Man, Tony Stark tells him not to make a big deal out of being a superhero, then him and Tony save a bunch of people on a boat, and that pisses off Tony, which leads him to take away Peter's suit, and then Peter has to solve his problem with the Vulture without help from Tony or the suit, and he probably gets the suit back in the end and beats the Vulture and, and wins Tony's approval. I feel like I already saw the whole fucking movie, and I only saw that trailer one time. Now this is also very important for trailers that are advertising comedy movies. I hate when all the best jokes for a movie are spoiled in the trailer. Some trailers even use alternative jokes or takes that weren't used in the actual movie so that you don't have the joke spoiled for you. Go to school, boys. Bye. Take care of those. A lot of people in comedy movies end up ad-libbing a lot of the lines anyway, so there's a lot of extra footage and that's what ends up being used in some trailers. I like this. This is a good thing. Now let's look at that Alien trailer. The Alien trailer is quick, it's fast, it makes your heart pound. You understand the concept behind the movie. There's a scary alien on a spaceship. That's all you need to know. This trailer is so good that all the sci-fi horror trailers lately are still ripping it off. You know the trailer for life? Yeah, that's just the Alien trailer, guys. Hell, Ridley Scott even ripped himself off with his Prometheus trailer. It's just the Alien trailer again. Is also a good example of a good trailer for a bad movie. He even did it again with the upcoming Alien Covenant trailer. 
However, the Alien Covenant trailer breaks my one golden rule. Don't show the monster in the trailer. Ooh, he's so scary. Yeah, you know what? I don't care anymore because I already fucking saw him. You know, guys, that would have been a really iconic reveal in the film. I really like those early trailers for the most recent Godzilla movie we got in America, where you can barely, barely see Godzilla in his full glory. You only get a taste of just how massive he is. And then you just hear that scream. That's all you need. Everyone knows what Godzilla sounds like. People get fucking hyped for that stuff. Now all the new Star Wars trailers have the benefit of containing recognizable elements. People do not need to be told who Han Solo is. Everyone knows who he is. There's no line in the trailer saying, Hey, you're Han Solo, the hero of the rebellion, friend to the Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. No, we know this shit already. So the trailer doesn't waste its time explaining this to you. You see Han Solo, you see Chewbacca, and you're like, oh shit, that's really cool. Plus, we are shown very few details of the plot, and this leads to a lot of hype and speculation. The visuals speak for themselves. Which leads me to the second thing that trailers need to do. Use visuals that stand out, plus don't use generic text. Let the visuals of the trailer be the focal point. I really hate seeing text coming across the screen saying cliche or generic taglines. Oh, judgment is coming. Yeah, no shit, the movie's called Judge Dredd. I actually really like this movie, okay, so I take this very personally. I love the trailer for the Scott Pilgrim movie, until it has a tagline at the end of the trailer, it's on like Donkey Kong? Are you fucking kidding me? This also counts for when some random guy is doing a voiceover for the trailer. Yeah, you know the guy. Now, he's taken his love of fear. Hello? Hello, Sydney. One step too far. Either way, it's much more effective to have the characters from the movie explaining the details of the movie. Take the Inception trailer, for instance. Inception has a very, very strange premise. It's fucking weird. It is so strange that it absolutely has to be explained to the audience or they're gonna be confused. Now though, I do think the Inception trailer is pretty damn good. I don't like that it uses the text thing. Even so, the visuals are what drive the trailer forward, along with that really, really good song. Now I'll give the trailer a free pass if the only text that I see is about the release date or the director. I'm way more interested in a movie if I recognize the director. And if it says, this Christmas, it just excites me more because I know I'm gonna be able to experience this thing fairly soon. I love that in the Mad Max trailer, it just says, from George Miller, and then it shows you shots that are from George Miller. Now another amazing trailer is the Breath of the Wild Switch announcement trailer. As far as game trailers go, this is the finest example I've ever seen. Video game trailers have to do something that movie and TV shows don't really have to worry about. Show the gameplay. The trailer starts off by showing the graphics and the visuals, then the second portion goes into the action and the gameplay. Then the last third teases elements from the story without giving away any specific details. Then it explodes at the end in the last few seconds showing all of these elements working together. It is a piece of art. This trailer is so good. This is achieved all without a single line of text. Plus, the music is amazing. Actually, let's stay on that subject. Let's talk about music and audio. The Alien trailer uses unsettling noises to build anxiety and tension, and the Star Wars trailer uses the iconic music that anyone with half a heart will be moved by. I mentioned the Inception trailer and how it had great music, and I wasn't fucking joking. That song and the foghorn noise have changed trailers to this very day. Every epic large-scale trailer has this... I do think that for a time it was really overused, and I'm more likely to give credit to trailers that don't rely on that sort of thing. Lately the trend has been to either use classic songs or covers of classic songs. I call this the Guardians of the Galaxy effect. Even though trailers have been doing this for way longer than Guardians has been around, it seems like it's super prevalent now. I mean, I remember back in the day there was a hilarious TV spot for Batman Begins that had fucking Nickelback in it.
yeah, no, this actually existed. I'm not making this up. I also remember being in the theater for Deadpool, and one of the trailers before it was the Suicide Squad trailer with Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, right after this, they played the trailer for Hardcore Henry, which used Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. That's two Queen songs in two trailers, one right after the other, and everyone in the audience noticed. However, I think that this technique can be used effectively. Let's look at two trailers with the same song, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Thor Ragnarok. The tone of these movies are insanely different, but they both use Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin as the main song. The version in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is much more unsettling and stressful, and the trailer is cut to each pounding beat. And as I said, Thor Ragnarok uses the same song, but they use the original performed by Led Zeppelin. The lyrics of this song are about Vikings and Norse mythology, so it makes perfect sense why this is in a Thor trailer. Asgard is dead. Plus, the song is just wild and fun, which Thor Ragnarok seems to be emulating. The visuals look like a heavy metal album cover, and the usage of Led Zeppelin just pushes that even more. Music is important. These three values should always be used when making a trailer for any form of media. The Stranger Things trailer was great because it employed these techniques, and as such, I watched the show the day it came out. No matter what, trailers can be beautiful things. Going back and watching old trailers for this video has made me feel super nostalgic, even for movies I ended up not liking. Now I usually don't ask this, but I'd love for you guys to comment which trailers are your favorites. They can be for games, movies, shows, anything, I don't care. Even if the final product wasn't what you anticipated it being. I love to go back and watch old trailers and try to imagine what the world was like before that thing being advertised ever came out. This is why trailers are special, they're almost an art form in themselves bite-sized pieces of entertainment that can build There's excitement no for someone. That when it's your sister. How this you is doing? your twin sister. Are you going bald? Huh? What is this? She isn't shy. I put a little list together of things I want to do. What is this? This isn't funny. Oh, Jackie has a twin sister. Identical or fraternal? Uh, nocturnal, like a bat. <laughs> no, you know what? I was trying to be heartfelt by talking about why why God, God, stop it. <laughs> 